Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, we, I am going to share with you the five steps I use to create masterboard magic. So I'm starting out and I'm using 11 by 17 copy paper as my base. And while you can use any kind of collage papers, the first step is to collage papers down. So I went in my stash, I pulled out some gel prints. I was thinking I was feeling yellow and orange today. So that's what I grabbed. This is a gel print. It's got a little bit of green on it. And the other piece that you see on the right hand side is a tissue paper or deli paper that has been colorized and stamped on as well. Now, for the first step of collage, you can use book paper, magazine papers, anything you want. Now, some of that may or may not show at the end. It's going to add texture to your masterboard, as well as potentially some pattern and maybe some color. Now, this text is a font that I downloaded from defonts.com and I blew it up to the size that I want. So many times the print font or stamps that I get are too small. So here's a workaround for that. And I love this in the background and I definitely will be using this again. If I find the name of the font, I will list it in the description box below. It is a free download. So here I'm just ripping up my various collage papers and assembling them on the page. Remember, collage is just the first step. So once I have enough down. I am simply going to glue it down to my 11 by 17 copy paper. Now I'm using copy paper because I know I'm going to glue this on to another surface and I don't want it to get too thick. But some people use tag board, some people use watercolor paper, you can use whatever you want for how you will create. Now I'm gluing this all down with fluid matte medium, making sure there's a good coat underneath and over top. I'm not worried about composition here. I just wanna get some of this color and some of this pattern on all parts of the master board. Now a master board you create during one session, but it's use, it's used for multiple makes. And the video that's going to show the multiple makes that I make using the same master board will come in a few days after this video. To include it with this video just makes it too long. So I'm overlapping and that's going to build texture as well. Now, if you've used book paper and magazine paper, some of that may not show or it might not have a whole lot of color, in which case you'll be free to select whatever colors you want if everything that you collage down is very neutral. So here's the second step, stamping. And I'm choosing to stamp with black. I want to get some of that into the background at this layer. And I'm using a homemade stamp or a couple stamps here. Now this looks really bright and bold and, and you got a lot of contrast, but remember, this is only step two. Some of this will be pushed back by upcoming steps. Now 
Now I'm stamping with black acrylic paint. So I'm making sure that this is going to dry. Now here's another homemade stamp. And there will be a video where I show how I make some of my homemade stamps. And you're getting a sneak peek of this. I'm not sure if that video will have, will play before this one or after. But I picked two stamps here that have a similar feel. There's similar shapes. I'm not worried if I'm not getting a perfect stamp. This isn't a focal image stamp. I just want pattern down below. Now, step three, we are going to colorize this. And I'm putting some white gesso. And this knocks back some of the stamping, some of the collage papers that we have. And then I'm also going to be mixing in the yellow and the orange. Since I chose to use collage papers or gel prints, I had a color scheme going into this. So I am primarily sticking to that, although I do add another color and you can always do that as well during the colorization stage. So you can see I've knocked back some of the stamping and this is just, I'm just doing this intuitively. I'm not really thinking. And that's one of the fun parts of making a master board because you're just honing into your creative part because you're not considering or thinking about where this is going to go. You're just having fun with color. So I'm mixing, I'm grabbing some of the orange, some of the bright yellows. And then I grab some medium magenta and I'm mixing that in with the orange and that gives kind of a coral color. And this really changes where this page would go and the focal images that I stole. That little bit of pink really led me down that road. You could have added teal here. That would have worked. You could have added blue. You could have added any color that you want. You just have to pay attention. If they're across from each other on the color wheel, they may make mud. So you wouldn't want to put blue and orange together because that might give you a color that you didn't really want. So when in doubt, mix them off to the side and see if you can do them wet on wet. And if you can't, dry it in between and then apply the color that you want. While I really like the addition of the pink, I did not want this to end up too much coral. I did not want to lose the yellow. And so I'm, I'm playing with that. I'm adding, and then I've added a lot of the orange in as well. Because I really wanted those colors to dominate in the background. And I'm just going to continue this colorization stage, a little bit of dance, mixing the colors, adding, subtracting, until I'm happy with the overall look. And you can see how all that stamping I did with my DIY stamps, that really has been pushed back. It's not as, there's not as much contrast anymore. It's been pushed further back. It's not in your face anymore. Now, all that texture from gluing it down, there's some wrinkles there. I'm loving that. It's catching the paint in different ways. It's adding to the overall yumminess of this background. So colorizing was step 
three. So one was collage papers, whatever you got. Number two, stamp. Usually with a dark color, I usually do black. Number three, colorize with white gesso. Here I'm just adding a little bit more orange to make that pop. So step four, we are going to stencil. And I'm going to use colors that are in the background. And I'm using this inspired word stencil. And I'm putting these words. I don't really, my intent isn't to have these words as readable. It's just another pattern. And I'm going to use quinacridone magenta. I'm going to use red. As you can see, I've done some of that. That was, the camera didn't work at that time. So here I'm adding some red just for a little bit more, but I'm sticking pretty much to the colors that are in the background. I'm not going for the high contrast with black because I don't want these words to show up. If I did, I might have put them in black. I'm just trying to get some of this patterning, they're actual words, but I just want the patterns in various places on this master board. Because again, I don't know what I'm making out of this. You, I really didn't even have to uh, stencil the entire word. I could have just put parts of the word just to have the letters in the background. Masterboard is a great time to try out different things, like using a word stencil. Saw a gap somewhere, so I'm just adding another one. So I grabbed this, I believe this is Fancy Feathers, and I'm going to use only one of the feathers on this. And I'm going to, I start out with white gesso, but I do switch to white acrylic paint, which is more opaque because I wanted it a little bit more opaque. And I'm just gonna stencil this throughout. Again, the, I am not using this as a focal image. I'm just using it as an interesting pattern. And I'm using white because I want to lighten the background. Soften the warm tones that are in the back. And this kind of pushes everything back. Again, we are layering. Every time we stamp or stencil, we are adding another layer of pattern 
texture. And that's pushing everything that's behind it back. So here I'm using white acrylic paint and I went over the other parts with the white acrylic paint off camera to make them a more opaque as well. You can flip the stencil and it's not necessary that you get the full feather every single time. I like the movement this stencil adds. So stenciling was number four. Now everybody you watch that does a master board is going to do it different and everybody is absolutely right. There is no right way, wrong way. There's tons of variations. Find what works for you and that's what you do again and again and again. Having the master board done makes for the creation of projects really quick and easy. Now, step five is to add contrast and tweak it. Add those little bits that are just going to bump it up. And here I'm using this Stampendous, I believe, dot stamp with black acrylic paint. And I'm, it just adds contrast. It just adds so much life to the master board. And I find to put on these stamps using a brayer with the acrylic paint is a great way of doing it. Just make sure you wash your stamp right after you've stamped with acrylic paint. And this is pushing that those feathers back so they no longer seem to be the focal point, which they aren't. So at this stage, I'm really liking the look of my master board. I'm thinking it's pretty much done. Remember, the master board is just the start. You can always add things when you start creating. You can add colors. You can add more pattern to make it work for whatever you are using it for. So here is this. And I just decided before I go for my walk, I'm going to do some splatters. So I am going to splatter with gold. This is gold paint that I've just thinned. It's my splatter paint. And I'm using my fan brush. And I'm getting a lot on here because I want bigger droplets and splatters. So I'm going to splatter with gold. And then I'm going to also splatter with white. And I'm splattering now because this saves time. Instead of doing it on each individual project, if I do it now, then that's one more thing that I don't have to deal with or do later. Now, the colors that you see here are very true. The close-ups that I took, I'm not sure why the colors went off. But this is a very bright, vibrant page. So I set this down and I let it dry. And once it's dry, here's the finished master board.
I think the sun must have gone out or something. So I grab my window templates, and I've got circle window templates, ones for ATCs, for every kind of substrate that I may want to be using it on. And I'm going to try it out here and see what I'm going to create with this. And I kind of look at the window templates, I look at the substrates, and I'm going to make those decisions. But you're going to have to watch the next video to see what I end up doing with this masterboard. Here are the finished final pages. They kind of got dulled. I apologize for that. Until next time, go get creative.